if I may, I'd like to introduce uh, the virtual event company. So we've um, Avi Vidri and Rachel Waldron from the virtual event company. So um, virtual event company is a virtual and hybrid event specialist. Um, it provides consultancy and project management for venues and for agencies. And interestingly, the company evolved out of live event management. So that's really useful in terms of the fact that it knows the industry and the challenges of the industry very well. Um, Avi's going to present for us uh, and then uh, questions can be posed. Uh, I think Rachel was going to take questions in the first instance, but again, if we do those through, uh, through the chat function into admin. Um, Avi is a uh, chief technologist, uh, if I'm correct there. Avi, I hope so, at Virtual Event Company, so looks after the technology side of the business uh, and very kindly and sympathetically for us today has promised uh, to make this presentation not overly technical or not technical. We will be the judges, um, <laughs> but I'm sure it will, it will help us tremendously, Avi. So uh, if I may, over to you and thank you very much. Great. Thanks very much, Judy. And so, so no pressure there then. So let's just uh, make sure you can see my screen. Yeah. Okay, so um, my name's Avi. So the virtual event company uh, literally does what it says on the team. Um, we don't have our own uh, technology platform, so what we do is that we try and find the best solution or the best answer for, for our clients and their needs. I thought before going into hybrid, uh, I'd have a very quick few words on what a virtual event is. Um, now, we all know the meetings, we've all had Zoom fatigue and Teams fatigue, we've had that uh, extensively over the last year. Uh, we know what webinars are. So webinars are one person to many people viewing. Um, a virtual event is, is a combination of both and, and it's something which we call an experience. Okay. Um, so the best way of having a look at one is just to have a look at an, at an, at an example um, of a uh, virtual event that we carried out recently. Uh, it was back in November. Um, and what you see here are two screen grabs uh, on oops, something can only happen when you're live. So let's just go back. Okay, there you go. Um, so you have uh, a, a home page for the event. And just to see some of the menu items on the left hand side uh, for a virtual event, you can have uh, uh, videos, speakers, exhibition sponsors, uh, similar to any any event really. Uh, and the image on the right hand side, you've got the, the actual uh, presentation. We've got uh, uh, a panel session of four people presenting probably from the home or the office with some engagement on the right hand side, uh, some Q&A. Um, so this is all about uh, sharing content at events. Um, the other big area of events we know uh, is, is networking. Uh, so this is the ability for in this for this event, uh, 2000 attendees could uh, search for each other and chat with each other, as well as hold video chats. Another key area of um, events generally and, and how they can be implemented on in a virtual event is um, to have exhibitors and sponsors. Uh, this particular event had 90 different exhibitors um, where we could uh, have their company information, videos, images, etc., all available for attendees to uh, to download as well as communicate directly with the company. So let's go on to um, hybrid events. Now, I'm not, obviously not going to spend any time explaining what a live event is. Um, so the, the question here is, um, uh, how can the gentleman on the right of this image uh, participate in the live event which is taking place uh, with the rest of the audience? So, so just looking at it from a venue perspective, um, it's old cliche, uh, I'm sure you've heard that plenty of times, the new normal. So uh, for venues is, is hybrid, or probably not generally, hybrid events, are they the new normal? Um, from the venue's perspective, things that you need to think about are uh, space and uh, respecting government guidelines on social distancing. Um, audio visual, so each venue uh, or group or chain or, uh, will have their own uh, existing setup. 
um, but then they can also use the production companies. Um, and, and bandwidth, so bandwidth is, is important, but it's not a showstopper. So I know many venues are worried about their bandwidth uh, of, of internet, um, but it is quite easy to, easy to buy boosters for a particular event. Um, so that shouldn't be a, a, a showstopper or a large concern. So the key parties involved in on delivering on a hybrid event uh, are firstly the venue, obviously we need the space, um, next is a, a production partner or an AV company. Um, in many cases, venues may already have a, a partner. Uh, the third one is, is an optional, and that is obviously where someone like the virtual event company would come in, uh, and that is uh, a, a virtual or hybrid event specialist. Um, the key thing for, for us is exactly what Julian said in the beginning. Our background is in uh, event management and live event management. So what we would provide the end-to-end -end event and project management um, to suit both the live attendees as a remote as well as the, the remote attendees. Um, so what we need to uh, recognize that we've got two different audiences, they're going to have two different experiences, and how do we make them uh, both get the best out of, uh, out of the event? So what are the benefits for venues? Um, well, firstly, it's, it's a new offering. And just remember that your clients, who might be agencies, corporates, or local businesses, they're also not experts on hybrid. So I understand you probably aren't on the hybrid or the virtual side, but nor are your clients. So there's a chance for you to offer them something different, something unique. Um, you can offer them a greater reach because of a remote, remote audience. Um, hybrid events are, are greener uh, and you can provide ritual analytics uh, for your clients for both the remote as well as live attendees. So in terms of the operations then, um, hybrid event is normally carried out via an app. Uh, I'm sure you and I get uh, lots of emails in our inboxes about virtual hybrid platforms. They all look very similar to, to what I've got on the screen. Um, the, the key thing is uh, where does the content come from? So we've got the, um, the fireside, ch fireside chat taking place in, in this image. Um, of course, what we want is uh, the content in there to come from within a venue. So, so, so that is the key thing. So that could be a live speaker, a panel session, uh, a breakout rooms, etc. So uh, all coming from the venue. Now, just look at some examples of, um, and, and these next few slides are graphical, so less of the bullet points, um, just to give ideas. Uh, this is an event we carried out in, I think, September. Um, <clears throat> it was carried out in a studio, um, but it could just as easily have been carried out in a meeting room, in a venue, uh, with 30 people watching, 30 people socially distanced. Uh, um, uh, so, so that's an example of a, a meeting which could take place on uh, of a hybrid event. Um, I have talked a lot about venues, but but uh, uh, much of what I've said can apply to meetings as well, and I will come back to that. Um, here's another example of a panel session. Um, so people addressing uh, a, an audience, maybe of 10, 20, 30 people. Um, and we also have the screen behind. So on the screen, you might have a remote uh, speakers, or there may be remote attendees as well. So there are many different options. Um, and one thing you can think about is just with, uh, conceptualizing, uh, the panelists could turn, turn around, face the screen, and form a virtual round table. So just giving ideas of, of implementation and, and how to uh, um, manage or uh, operate hybrid events. Um, here's a couple of examples. I, I, I won't, don't really need to say very much, just uh, images and ideas um, for you to think about within your own uh, environment. Um, this could be um, on the left, could be uh, a breakout session. Um, and on the right, um, just to stress though, you've got polar, uh, so you might have two uh, remote speakers with one person on, on stage. 
and in the background you've got some live polling so it's very important that any solution you have um, respects both the, encourages engagement so it's engagement both of live attendees as well as those remote yeah and things like question and answers polling chat all of those are normally undertaken within the app and one of the key things about the app is that it should be uh, the same app for the people who are uh, attending remotely as well as those on site um, and that way they'll all be able to communicate together using the same platform and the same technology here's another example um, this is <coughs> me, um, an event by l'oreal and in this example um, the event was going out live again it could have been done in a meeting room or a small um, uh, a small room in a uh, uh, in any venue um, but this was going out live through LinkedIn and Twitter and people were reacting to it um, you guys the venues they you don't need to worry or think too much about the the, the technology platform uh, because that's what your uh, tech platform provider or your hybrid event provider will do for you so they'll manage all of that for you So just coming on to the last few slides then, um, I think one thing would just probably come out in, in all the, in the uh, uh, slides and the images is just the, the sheer variety of options or the large number of options. Um, we call it one event with two experiences. So one experience for the live attendees and a different experience for the um, remote attendees. Um, so the content can be a combination of pre-recorded and live content. Um, you can have uh, various breakouts, plenaries, and uh, you just need to think about for each event or meeting, what does that look like? What does the plenary, what does the breakout uh, room look like? Um, will it be remote people? Will it be people live or a combination of both? Um, one key thing is, is throughout, think about how to have engagement, as I, uh, as I mentioned before, the Q&A and, and polling. Um, you, you might find that Networking Lounge works for um, people, live uh, attendees, but not so well for, for remote. Um, and, and also just thinking about remote or virtual attendees, um, their agenda may be different. Um, certainly you want their, their experience to be similar, um, when it comes to the very beginning, the whole registration process, you want to really have the one registration process where people can choose, yes, I want to uh, attend live or no, I want to attend remotely. Um, but uh, when it comes to the actual agenda, you, you just need to think that uh, uh, attention span for people remote uh, is different to those actually in the, in the room. Here's a great story um, which just came out in the in the um, event press a couple of days ago and I just thought it was just sharing just highlighting the the areas in um, uh, bolded uh, so convention bureaus from a number of cities in the north of England have got together to allow delegates to attend the same national event at different COVID secure venues and um, they're all connected through live streaming technology so each hub is linked together by, uh, by, by using technology. So if you think about uh, half a dozen different venues um, have used the technology they already have, um, probably did a bit of work to get together a bit of networking and come up with a, a fairly very clever, unique solution, I think, um, which allows hybrid events to take place, one single event, with, with multiple hubs or uh, hubs around, uh, around the country. Um, and, and I thought that was really clever. Uh, so just to give ideas to some of the venues here who may or, or may not have uh, the technology already there, uh, but to how they can work together with other independent hotels if they are independent um, to maybe uh, provide some sort of a joint, joint offer. Okay, um, 
page to this. Okay, so let's look at the commercial aspects. Uh, and, and I'll just have a look at costumes as well, because obviously these are going to be important. Um, so venues can, so events, let's look at events first. Events can be complex. So normally they require a fairly detailed brief, uh, which is exactly the same as you have at a normal live event. Um, for meetings, um, we can create possibly fixed packages um, and call it like a virtual delegate rate, similar to a DDR, a data delegate rate. Um, so each venue is different. What exactly this, this VDR looks like is going to depend for a uh, change from venue to venue. Um, but we can think in terms of um, maybe try and come up with a standard package for those who will be attending live, those who will be remote. And an important factor is economies of scale. So uh, uh, probably it's very likely that the cost of the technology is going to be the same whether there's 10 or 100 or 1,000 people uh, um, attending remotely. So, so the more, the better, yeah, to reduce the, the, the overall cost. Uh, so that's a consideration. Uh, and other venue uh, commercial options are, are uh, sponsoring and networking opportunities or exhibitor opportunities, uh, because now you can give your sponsors and exhibitors a, a global or, or a wider reach uh, through the virtual or the hybrid uh, solution. Um, cost of considerations, um, the, you, you need to think in terms of um, a platform, and, and this is why, you know, the, this, the, 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 your hybrid or virtual partner will advise on the most appropriate uh, platforms. So the technology platform through which the, um, the virtual events will, will be published, uh, and from there onwards onto uh, either a website or YouTube uh, or various others. So, so there are various options. Um, so licensing and configuration of a platform um, would be a consideration of the cost. Uh, production, um, most venues are already familiar with production companies or have relationships with them already. So have a good idea of, of production costs. Um, of course, it's going to depend on case by case, uh, whether it's a meeting, whether it's an event, you need to bring in more equipment or you can use the equipment you already have. Um, other options is that enhanced experiences. So you can, for example, um, offer a solution whereby for remote uh, attendees, you can deliver food and beverage to them at lunchtime. So <clears throat> again, thinking a bit creatively, and of course, the resourcing required to, to, to run the events and, and manage the events. So um, I've covered a lot in a very short period of time. I, I'm conscious of um, having covered a lot. Um, open to questions. And uh, obviously, all this content will be available to you afterwards. Um, myself or Rachel, we're happy to uh, address any questions you have or, or even go and look at some of the uh, slides again that uh, I went very quickly through. Thank you, RV. That was really useful, but as you say, a lot of information there. Okay, so we've got a few questions for you. When should virtual events replace Zoom calls? Yesterday. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, Zoom fatigue set in, I think, not yesterday, it set in in, uh, lockdown was in March, so I think April the 1st is when Zoom fatigue had, uh, set in. Um, and because of that, many organizations have been looking to do something beyond Zoom. Again, one of the slides showed you what Zoom was, what a webinar was, and then just to give you an idea of what, of what a virtual event is, obviously Zoom is so cheap. Yeah, that you you know depending on your budget, but as as you get budget, you want to do a bit more than Zoom and Teams. Yeah, then then the tool there are tools out there now which are relatively cheap, so um, uh, and affordable to go to the next level of, of Zoom, and then the next level is a virtual event and 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 uh, and etc. So so there are tools out there to to go beyond Zoom. Definitely, we're happy to advise them. Brilliant, thank you. So listening to your presentation, 
Hybrid events could be seen by a venue as being quite simple to arrange, but the tech side being managed by others. Hoteliers can therefore concentrate on what they do best by providing a venue, food and beverage. Um, is that right? Are we looking at this the right way? Or have we picked up the long end of the stick? How would you answer that, Claire? I think, I think that that is how, how we see this. So venue, so I had the three, a slide with the three main stakeholders. The venue does what the venue does best obviously provide the venue as well as uh, the F&B, et cetera. Production company does what the production company does best. And then if there's a need for a middle layer, the company that brings it all together, ma manages, thinks through the solution. I mean, if you, in a normal environment, in sort of like a live environment, you'd have an event management company do that. Yeah. So when it comes to the hybrid event, uh, that event management company also needs to manage the technology. The hybrid okay. asset, and that's basically what the company like the virtual events company would do. So we partner with the venue, yeah, yeah, and if they have an existing uh, AV partner, then work with those as well. Or if the venue doesn't have an AV partner, then we can uh, obviously recommend as well and work in partnership to deliver on a, a client brief. Okay, All right, Rachel. Um, if we're um, if we're working as a venue, does the venue need a checklist so that they can go through what the client requirements are in order that when they're in a position to pass it over to you, the virtual event company, they can do so having covered all the questions that almost you need answering without you having to constantly keep going back. So should there be a sort of standard checklist? Yeah, we've got a standard checklist, which we go through when we talk to the clients or agents for each occasion. And what the venue really needs to understand is it's not difficult to be a venue for a hybrid event. You have to approach it in the same way that you would a live event. You need to know the ins and outs of what your client's trying to achieve while they're on site. So it's all about the numbers, obviously the F&B, which is taken into consideration, and that's what um, the venue would look at. It's about how many breakouts you need, whether there's going to be a main plenary, how many speakers are going to be there. Obviously, you now need to ask whether how many speakers are going to be on site, how many are going to be remote. Um, so it's, it's looking at every single detail of a live event and then thinking, ah, oh, which bit's going to be on site? Where are the delegates going to be? Where are the speakers going to be? Who's going to be in the breakouts? So that's the more technical side, which is what we would then take on board. But we can certainly provide a checklist, say, of 10 points that you would need to go through on the conversations you have so that you can be proactive about selling these events on your in your venue. OK, so, so venues could almost contact you directly, could they, just to... Because for a lot of people, it's a little bit... This, this is the scary bit on how, how do they do this and how do they ask that and actually they need to be confident almost before the phone's ringing. Yes, and every venue is different and that's what you've got to remember. So whatever I'm saying here, I can have a separate conversation with whoever wants to have that prior to you going out and speaking to your clients, just so we can run through what you need to know for your specific venue. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so you're happy that everyone contacts you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, one more question then. Um, have other industries already adopted this technology, such as universities broadcasting across multiple venues to multiple audiences with one keynote speaker? I would say uh, yes. Yes. So um, that, that, that example, um, but many, many chains have uh, Zoom rooms i don't know if you've heard of the technologies in rooms or whether it's rooms um, so within a chain of hotels they can offer uh, that virtual or hybrid solution that i showed that the uh, multiple um, regions uh, sorry the cities in the, in the in the north are providing they're using convention bureaus but there are many uh, hotel chains that have that technology um, uh, already in place because they've got, you know, because they're connected. Um, in, in terms of other industries, yes, education, uh, and, and there's an, everyone is looking to do something different and they're not waiting for normal to come back. 
and, and if, if there's one takeaway from this this whole session it is don't wait for normal because there is no yeah, what is normal now exactly what is normal so if normal is thinking creatively and what can you offer that you haven't been before uh, or been able to because you you don't have the knowledge talk to people who know um, talk to your peers as well yeah and just see if you can work with other hotels and what can you offer together uh, and, and come up with other concepts brilliant thank you i think that's all of the questions